Hi, Amy Stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we are moving on to chapter one, section three, day one um, of the practice of statistics. Uh, we are going to learn how to describe quantitative data with numbers. Um, so in the future, you're going to hear the term um, numerical summary. And that basically means um, use numbers to summarize the data. Um, so anytime you see that term or hear that term, that's what that means. And today we're going to be going over the different types of numbers that you should probably be using to summarize data. Um, one option is you could list every single data point out, but that's not usually very useful. Um, again, sometimes that's why we have like histograms and dot plots and stem plots um, because that allows us to show the general trend of the data. Um, but sometimes uh, the shape is not enough and we would want to um, describe the data using a list of numbers. So we're going to go through like what those numbers are, what you might use in what situations. Um, so uh, some of the stuff might be review uh, and some of it probably will not be. So we're going to start with uh, something called the five number summary um, and it's basically five different numbers that help describe a single data set. Um, so the three that you've probably heard of um, are the minimum, the median, and the maximum value in the data set. Okay, so just to clarify those, the min is the minimum or smallest value in the data set, and then the max is the maximum or largest. Um, the median, hopefully you remember what the median is, but in case you don't, um, the median is when you line up, like the way you find the median is you line up all the numbers um, chronologically from lowest to highest, um, and then you basically like take one off the bottom and take one off the top and take the next one off the bottom and the next one off the top and you like meet in the middle. Um, and so um, statistically speaking, um, the median is the middle number um, and 50% of the data lies above the median and 50% of the data lies below the median. Um, and again, you get that um, by canceling off the values uh, from low to high. Um, it is also called Q2 uh, because we, we're going to be, the five number summary splits up the data um, into quartiles or fourths. So you have um, in between the minimum and Q1, there should be 25% of the data. Um, this is quartile one or, or um, the first quartile. Um, you should have 25% of the data between Q1 and Q2, and you should have 25% of the data between Q2 and Q3 and then 25% of the data between these two. Typically, the best way to find the quartiles is to, just like you would with the median, line all the numbers up from low to high, um, and then cancel off the low and high values and find the median. And then from the median to the lowest value, you find the median in between those two. So you, you find the median in between the minimum and the median. And then you also find the median in between the median and the maximum. So you basically have found, you split the data up into fourths or quarters, which is why they're called quartiles. And the reason we have quartile one and quartile three is because the median is in fact quartile two. Okay, so next we wanna talk about the different ways to measure center. Um, the two main things that we have, um, are the median and the mean. Uh, both are considered to be averages um, because you're, they're both measuring the center of the data. They're just doing it in different ways. So you want to be careful between using, using the term average um, versus mean and median. Um, if you say something like, oh, I'm just going to find the average of this data, um, you need to specify which one. Um, and I will ask you, like, which average are you talking about? Um, but if you have the mean or you have the median and you say, on average, we expect, I don't know, the students to perform at this level, um, that's fine. So you just want to be careful that you're using it appropriately. Um, and you can't assume that when somebody says the term, uses the term average, that they mean the mean. Okay. Um, so median, we already talked about how to find. That's the 50% of the data, splits the data in half. Um, the mean. Uh, hopefully this is what you typically know of as the average, 
which is you add up all the values and divide by how many there are. Okay, so here's the fancy way of writing it, but the mean is you add up all the values, divide by how many there are. Um, and then this is kind of like the formal notation. Uh, this big E looking thing is a uppercase sigma, um, and it just means sum of. So add up all of the x values, the x of i's. Um, so the first data point, second data point, the third data point, keep going, um, and divide by n, where n is the um, number of data points that you have or a number of values in your data set. Um, these two uh, symbols here, um, this one's called x bar, and this one is called mu, uh, which I'll write out for you. This one's a Greek letter. Uh, this one's just an x with a bar over it. Um, both of them represent the mean, uh, but one is for a sample and one is for a population. Okay, so uh, usually if we use Greek letters, we're talking about a population, um, and if we use a symbol like this, um, or um, English letters um, with like some symbols or whatever, um, we're usually talking about from a sample. If you have not learned what a sample or population are, or the difference between a sample and population are yet, um, you should check out uh, video 4.11 um, because that kind of talks about like experimental design and you know what the difference is between a sample and population, um, which is typically why I teach chapter four before I teach chapter one is so that I can like do this. Um, okay, so that's for the mean. Uh, for the median, um, you know, we already talked about that, so middle number. Okay, so I'm going to address real quick this when are they appropriate. Um, so the mean can be strongly influenced or is strongly influenced by extreme values, by like, like if most of your data is around 80, like 79, 78, 80, 81, 82, 83, um, we're doing test scores or something, and one person completely bombs the test and gets a 10%. The average, the mean average of the, um, of the test will drop tremendously because of that zero value or that 10%, or whatever, you know, whatever your low value is. Um, the median, on the other hand, uh, would stay right where the rest of the data is. So tip, typically, if you have skewed data, extremely skewed data, or... Um, extreme values and outliers, um, you would not want to use the mean because it will be affected by those outliers or those extreme values, um, and the median will not. So we like the mean if our data is symmetric because uh, it en encompasses more, right? It tells us more about the data, but uh, the median is usually better if the data is skewed or has outliers. Additionally, as I discussed in the uh, last video that we watched, um, that, that you went through, um, the mean is actually the balancing point of a data set. Um, it's, it's like where the weight is the same. <laughs> um, and the median is where 50% of the data is above and below that value. And last but not least, how to interpret these things in context. Um, so the mean and the median are both considered averages. So you could say the average test score is blank. Um, but Anytime you're interpreting a value in, in this class, it should always be in context. So if the data is about test scores, you should include the average test score is blank, or the expected test score is blank, or um, actually that's not the best. Wait till we get to probability to use that one. Um, uh, so that's kind of generally, when you're using context, when you're in this class, use context. All right, measures of spread, um, we're not going to go gravely into detail on these. Um, the range is just the maximum value minus the minimum value. Um, the interquartile range is Q3, so your third quartile minus your first quartile, so it's just kind of the range of the middle 50% of the values. Um, and then standard deviation measures the average distance away a given point is from the mean. Um, and the next video we're going to go into detail about that. Um, S of x and sigma, this is a lowercase sigma. So, so this is an uppercase sigma, this is a lowercase sigma, this lowercase sigma is standard deviation for a population, 
S of X is a standard deviation for a sample. Okay, so that's kind of all that stuff written out. Um, so similar to the, the mean and the median, um, the range and a quartile range and standard deviation are used in different cases. So the standard deviation goes with the mean. Um, so usually if you're using the mean as a measure of center, you should be using the standard deviation as a measure of um, spread. And that would be the case where most your data is, is mostly symmetric. Um, and then you would want to use the range and the interquartile range with, along with the median um, if the data is skewed and has outliers. So if I ask you for a numerical summary of a data set, um, you don't need to give me all of these things. You pick a value, a measure of center, and a measure of spread, but they have to go together. So if you use the mean, you should not use the interquartile range because you use them for different types of data and different sets of data. Okay, so same kind of situation there. Um, always use context when you're interpreting. Um, so for example, if I ask you what the standard deviation like of 10% means on the test that I give back to you, um, what that means is that on average you'd expect a person, a person's score to be 10 percentage points away from the mean. Um, so again, use context. Okay, a box plot, also sometimes known as a box and whisker plot, um, is just a visual way to represent the five number summary. Um, so basically what you do is you have like a number line um, that appropriately describes your data. Um, you put, uh, what I like to do is I, I like to put five, I start by putting five vertical lines at the min Q1, the median, Q3, and the max, so those five numbers, like so. And then from the end, from the minimum to Q1, you draw a whisker or horizontal line. You do the same thing from Q3 to the max. Um, and then the inside, you make one big box between the three of those lines, so like that. Um, and that would be a box plot or box and whisker plot. Um, so it's, it's a nice way to kind of see if the data spread out because you know from here to here is 25% of the data and here to here is 25% of the data. So you actually have more, like in this example, there's more data between Q, or there's like more concentrated data between Q1 and, and the median than between the median and Q3. Um, and so you might have a box plot that looks like this. And that would be a skewed data set, right? Your extreme values are on the left, so it'd be, it'd be skewed left. Um, this is generally symmetric, but uh, it's a good way to just kind of see the general shape of the data. Okay, go ahead and try to find the five number summary and make a box plot of this data set, uh, which is a, a number, number of hours of sleep that you got the previous night. Okay, so here I just put the data in order, uh, and then I crossed off from 10, 4, 5, 9, 8, 5, um, all the way until I got the median, uh, which was between 6 and 7, so it's 6.5. Um, and then I split the first half of the data up into another half, so into quarters here. Um, and you should check, too, because, like, so there's 20 data points, um, so I should have 5 before Q1, 5 after another five and another five, which I do, so that's good. It means I split stuff up well. Um, here's my five number summary, and then here's the box plot. So something um, that is kind of neat about box plots as well is you can, on the same graph, display two different sets of data. So um, perhaps I had another class that I wanted to compare the sleeping habits to. And I could just plot them on top of each other. Um, and then it can compare, like, oh, the max of this one's higher than this one, and the median of this one is lower than this one, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I could just, you know, talk about the different distributions. Okay, and just because I don't want to rush explaining it to you, um, I'm going to do the outliers uh, in the next lesson. So we'll cover that um, later. All right, that's it. Have a great day. Bye.